eat the dream. You have to sleep the dream. You have to dream the dream. You got to touch. You have to see it when nobody else sees it. You have to feel it when it's not tangible. You have to believe it when you cannot see it. You got to be possessed with the dream. The dream. Yeah. Any weapon formed against us shall not prosper. Streets cutting and they say they want some real shit. Hey, young boy looking like he in a real lick. I got too many farms. Man, this shit getting boring. Half a million last week, you would've thought I was torn. Niggas try to count me out, I got they thought I was normal. They ain't know I was different. I like love be my witness, cause we is fucking at them dishes in my grandma's kitchen. Get a pigeon, do the vision, break it down on my niggas. Fuck their opinions. Why would I listen? They ain't see the vision when I had a foreign image. No, I ain't see them bitches, so I'ma pull on Hello everyone who's watching, my name is Key Jean with Key Sports and I'm here sitting with the NFL center turned tight end, free agent Dave Yurkovich. How you doing brother? I'm doing good, how about yourself? Man, I am doing amazing. First off, thank you for taking the time out here to sit down with me and just, you know, I know you have a busy schedule and I just really wanted to just take time to talk about you, man. You know, um, we know you as a football player, Mr. Football Guy, <laughs> uh, but Dave, you know, uh, let me know about how you are. Like, who is Dave? Um, uh, well. Dave off the field, Dave is a husband, Dave is a father, uh, I have a 11 soon to be 12 year old daughter and I have a son who is due to be born uh, anytime now, he's due in three weeks but uh, something tells me that he's prepared to, to come a little bit early. Uh, on top of that, yeah. you know, I, uh, I'm definitely a family man, I love spending time with you know, my wife, Melanie who's an absolute amazing woman. You know, she's uh, probably the, the biggest support arm I, I could ever, ever ask for. You know, she sticks by me through thick and thin. And, and outside of football, I'm also an entrepreneur. So the various business holdings I have and then football, you know, that takes a lot of time out of my life. And, and unfortunately, it draws a lot of time away from, from her and from the kids. And you know she's such a trooper, man. She hangs in there and she she fully supports it. You know, where I think a lot of women would have a tough time dealing with the fact that hey, my husband is gone for weeks, sometimes even months on end, but not her. You know, her her happiness is derived from my happiness, and she knows that obviously this game makes me very happy, and that you know business makes me very happy, because at the end of the day, my my goal in life is you know to, to obviously be successful and I want to be successful not only for myself but for my family because I want them to reap the benefits of, of whatever I'm able to create whether it's a, you know a large business or uh, a great football career you know I want to leave them with something to be not only proud of but something that's going to leave them uh, you know financially stable and comfortable for the rest of their lives so you know outside of football if, if you don't see me playing football, you don't see me training for football, I'm either at the gym or I'm at home with the wife and the kids. Hey man, they say happy wife, happy life. So <laughs> let, let me tell you something, man, that, is, that is real talk right there. And if my wife was here right now, I could just tell you she would be sitting there just shaking her head going, uh huh. Yep. Back to the subject of football. So you had a change uh, of a position from lineman to tight end. Uh, what brought this about? Well, um, Honestly, in uh, 2019, I stepped on the scale and I looked at where I was weighing and I was 333 pounds. And, you know, I had strong hips and, right. and strong arms, you know, and I, and I was great at being able to, you know, to, to hike a ball and to lock my hips and to be able to throw up and block. But uh, I just always had this desire, you know, ever since I was a kid, uh, I was always a big guy. Right. Uh, you know, when I graduated high school, I was 300 and about 330 pounds. Through college, I was 350 or so pounds. So, I mean, I was a big structured guy. And I always had that fantasy, that dream of being, 
not to say that, that not to take anything away from linemen out there because man I know some great guys that, that play on the line and, and it's a hard position because you know people don't give them enough recognition because every play for them is a car accident because they're making contact every single time that ball is snapped they are they're hitting right whereas you know uh, sometimes you know tight ends wide receivers you know quarterbacks they go untouched but no matter what, when that ball snapped, if you're on the line, you, your hands are going on somebody or somebody else's hands are going on you. <laughs> Most definitely. And, uh, you know, not taking anything away from them, but I always kind of wanted to be, I, I wanted to go out not being known so much as the guy who could snap a ball and pancake and nose tackle. I wanted to be a guy that could grab an end put him on his ass, hey. cut out, catch a ball, and take off downfield and be able to do a celebration dance. Hey, man. I just put seven points on the board. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's, that's what I always wanted. And the day came where I, I looked at that, I stood on that scale, and I said, you know what? That's it. I'm changing it today. And from that day moving forward, for about four months, I was still in D.C., uh, you know, working out there. And I made the move to South Florida because with COVID and being a free agent, I thought, well, you know, this is the ideal breeding grounds for anybody who's trying to train and trying to, to, to get into premier shape. Because, right. you know, a lot of people, I think, look at the game and they think, wow, you know, this is, uh, you know, being a football player, all you do is you just throw on some pads and, and, and your helmet and, and you go out there and you get these big paychecks and that's it, man. Nobody understands the real work that goes into this stuff. I mean, they don't understand that, you know, yeah, there's a, a 17 game season happening, but other than that, our entire off season is spent working out, eating right, practicing sometimes three four times a day i mean honestly i practice sometimes more during the off season than we even do during the actual season wow because you know every year when you come into a camp dude you're fighting for your job you know it's not like going to regular work where you know, you went in, you interviewed, you got this job and you've got coworkers and everybody there's there doing their thing. When you show up to work, it's you plus, you know, 80 or 90 guys. And within a few weeks, that's gonna get shaved down to 55 guys plus enough members for the practice squad. So if you're not on your A game and you're not in premier shape, you're out the door. Of course. So, you know. So tell me about your training regiment then. Any current or former players that you train with during the off season? You know, because you just mentioned that um, you have, you know, an amazing training session. So I'm just want to figure out who are you training with? Well, I'll tell you what. So uh, I, I'm so blessed uh, that I've gotten to make so many relationships within, uh, you know, the NFL and with different organizations that work with the NFL. Uh, you know, I worked out with Bomarito Sports Performance, which uh, Pete Bomarito, he's probably the premier, uh, you know, sports trainer, not only in the NFL, but uh, he works with all aspects of sports, whether it be MLB, NHL, NBA, boxing. Uh, you know, he, he, that's a guy who can, he can condition you and have you ready literally for any sort of situation that might come your way. Um, as far as players go that I trained with, uh, you know, my, my brother from another mother, as I like to call him, Chris <laughs> Jones from the Kansas City Chiefs, defensive tackle. Get to work with him. Jordan Reed. Jordan, I consider him to be a brother. You know, he's a Pro Bowl tight end. If there's anybody out there that knows that position and knows what it takes to be successful at it, it's him. And I'm beyond blessed to have the opportunity to work with him, to get advice from him, and, you know, to have him showing me things that other players just just don't have the ability to do you know it's one thing when you're when you're working with uh, a place like Bomberitos where they're conditioning you and, and they're getting you cardio wise you know prepared for that that strenuous you know three hours of a game 
but it's completely different when you've got a position specific guy like Jordan, for instance, who's out there actually running those routes with you. I mean, he don't put it, he, he doesn't put himself beneath going out there and saying, okay, we're gonna run a five and out and I'm gonna run right next to you. So that way, if you mess up, I'm gonna run you over. But if you do it right, you're gonna stay right in front of me. And I've been fortunate really in those regards to have him. And back in Tampa, uh, I, I through a, a chance encounter, I had an opportunity to meet uh, a guy by the name of Jeff Carlson. And Jeff is a former NFL quarterback who uh, has played for the Buccaneers, the Patriots, and the LA Rams. Wow. Uh, Jeff and I get together, uh, well, we try to do it at least three times a week, but sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll meet up as many as five days a week. Right. And Jeff is a guy who, you know, he, he cuts no corners. He doesn't hold anything back. If he sees you making a mistake, he's going to let you know it. And if he sees you doing something good, he's also going to let you know it. Right. But Jeff's a fantastic trainer. So, you know, those are, that's a good example of some of the guys I've gotten to work with. I mean, I've also gotten to, to put in a little bit of time with uh, people like David Njoku from the you know, Cleveland Browns, uh, John o. Smith from the Tennessee Titans. Yep. Um, you know, and I've been lucky enough to share the field with people like Le'Veon Bell, uh, James Conner, uh, Ramon Foster, uh, just some great guys. So I, I've, I've been fortunate to be able to, to, to pick up some good habits from some excellent players of all kinds of different positions. You know, everybody brings a little something different to the table. And I'm one of those guys that um, I've gotten compliments many times before about, I like Dave because Dave's quiet and he's, and, and, and people say, you know, I know he's not quiet because he's afraid to talk. He's quiet because he's listening. He's quiet because he's watching. He's seeing what's happening. And he's taking mental notes because the next time we see him do something, you can tell he picked up what so-and-so just did and now he's doing it. And you know, that's, I, I feel like that's like one of my strengths is the fact that, you know, I, 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 I might be one of the older guys in the league, but I'm still out to learn as much as I can every day. And you can learn something from everybody, whether they're a 22 year old player or they're a 42 year old player. Everybody brings something to the table and you should always give them an opportunity to show what they got. And, and, and perhaps what they got might be something you can use. Right, right. Oh, and I hear that, man. And let me ask you a question. You know, I know you probably catch a lot of criticism about your age and abilities. Um, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel like you're giving up or anything like that? No. Um, you know, do I catch a lot of criticism for it? Yeah. Um, if I had a dollar for every time I called an agent up over the years and, you know, looking for representation and the second that I told him my age, the phone clicked, I'd have quite a few dollars, but uh, you know, I just never let it stop me. Right. I just figured, you know what? That's that person's loss because at the end of the day, I know how hard I'm willing to work. I know how dedicated I am. And I know what kind of love I have for the game. So when I put those things together, I know that nothing but good is going to come from that. And you know, right now I'm with. A, an excellent organization who believes in me and sees the potential in me and the value that I would bring to an organization. So uh, I, I don't let the I don't let the criticism put me down because, man, you, you got to start your day with a positive mind and a positive attitude because if you come into it thinking, hey. You are what these other people say, man. You are too slow, you are too old, you are, you know, not, you don't have the skills that the, the 22, 23 year old guy has. It might be subconsciously happening, but you're not gonna be giving it that full effort that you typically would. So I don't let it get to me. I just, I wake up and I just say, you know what? I'm just gonna do my thing. And that's what I do, I come out, I grind, I punch the clock, 
whether I'm pulling the sled while I'm running the ladders, running routes, doesn't matter, I'm just doing my thing. Right, it's almost like as if AJ is nothing but just a number, you know, it's about the worth ethic that ultimately that you put in and that you've demonstrated in your practices and your trainings, and even just being on the field, you know, it's still gonna separate you regardless of, I guess, the age um, that some people might say or, you know, assume that, you know, it's like, oh man, like, no, I still have time. I still have, you know, well, I mean, you know, and lastly, my last question for you is, if you were sitting right now across the table next to a GM or an ownership team of an organization, why would you tell them that you would be a better choice than another person or another prospect? Well, you know, I think number one, you know, I, I would, I would want them obviously to see the dedication that I put out on the field. You know, I want them to see that, you know, athletically, I can, I can do my job and I can do my job well. But in addition to not only doing that, you know, I feel like I bring a lot of great morale to the locker room and I can help mentor the younger players, right. both on and off the field. You know, I've, I've been there and I've done it all, you know, as far as the right things or wrong things. And, you know, when you get a guy who's 22 years old and he comes directly out of college and, and maybe he's about to become a, a star player of a team and he gets this big four year, you know, I don't know, $20 million deal. All of a sudden this guy is surrounded by money, women, possessions, things that he never thought he'd have. Well, I would love to be the guy to say, hey, let me just explain to you how quickly this can be gone. Let me show you how to manage this stuff so that in the event your career ends early, you're not left penniless and without anything. Because uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but the average NFL career is 3.3 years. Wow. So if you're a guy who gets a four-year contract, 95% of those guys aren't gonna, they're not actually going to finish that, that contract. You know, so um, on top of that, you know, uh, whatever, whatever community I would be involved in as far as with the organization that I were to join, um, you know, just uh, let me throw something theoretically out there being from Pittsburgh. Let's say the Pittsburgh Steelers said, hey, we, I was sitting across from um, Mr. Rooney and, and Kevin Colbert and they said, you know, what would you do to make our organization better within the, within the community? I would be the first guy when, when people would say, hey, uh, who's willing to volunteer to do uh, stuff a bus, you know, to help get presents for, for un underprivileged kids. My hand would be the first one to go up when they would say, hey, who, who's the guy that would be willing to go to, to, to Children's Hospital and visit the, the kids that, you know, as much as it would pain me to see, might not be coming out of there. My hand would go up first. You know what I mean? If I could give somebody, if I could bring joy to someone's life, even if it was just for a short amount of time, you know, I'd like to be that guy, you know? Because, you know, I haven't had the easiest life, but I never let that find me, and I never let that stop me. And if I could give somebody just a little bit of hope, even if I know that hope is only going to get them through for a couple more days, I would love the honor to do that, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, so on top of, like I said, being a good, productive player on the field, I bring a lot of good morale to the locker room. I'm willing to work with the younger guys, and I'm willing to be an ambassador in the community. So if a team were to say, what makes you better than the next guy? That would be my answer. Wow, I mean, and that's, that's touching too, man. You know, a lot of times you don't see that. A lot of people just say, hey, look, you know, <laughs> try and get you guys more money, but it's like, it's, it's more than about money. It's just about morality, you know, things that aren't tangible with, you know, with, with, with money. Um, but Dave, I know you have to practice. I know we caught you right when you're about to practice. So we just thank you for giving us just a couple minutes of your time. Um, you know, I know we're out here outside in sunny South Florida. It is hot. Yeah, yeah. But hey, man, guess what? Like you said, this is the place to be at if you want to train or do anything professional um, with sports. So, you know, we thank you for, you know, just taking up your time. And um, we know you about to go kill it right now in practice. We'll see some of these clips, hopefully. Uh, but thank you, man. Thank you for your time. No, man, I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, having me on. And, uh, you know, I look forward to uh, 
hopefully talking to you again and the next time we have this chat uh, you know it's coming from the locker room of uh, whatever organization I end up uh, landing at oh no most definitely you make sure you give us a call first uh, you, you best believe I will. <laughs> we definitely want that call first Dave well all right guys there you have it Dave hey thank you